Hey there ghouls and creeps, I'm Britt and welcome to my channel where we do spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Today we're going to be making cryptid kitty toys, so let's get started. For those of you that have been around for a minute, you may recognize this project from the blog, which I'll make sure to include a link to down in the description just in case you prefer a written format. This has been one of the most visited projects on the blog and one of my favorites as well, which got me thinking that it would be fun to revisit this project and make minor modifications to the materials and techniques used to increase the quality of the end product. For the original Nessie and Mothman toys, I used polyester felt only, which isn't incredibly durable when little teeth and nails are going into it constantly and tugging and snagging at it. In addition, the details of the original set were simply adhered and I used a straight stitch to attach them, which worked for the most part, but I think we can do better. For this iteration of the project, I'm going to be using woven cotton solids in place of the felt and then attaching the details using a satin stitch. I think this will make the, the kitty toys ultimately more durable and kitty safe, so let's get into cutting out our pieces. <laughs> For super teeny pieces like these applique pieces, I found that instead of cutting out the piece and using the outside edge to trace, that instead I like to create a stencil by cutting out the inside. This makes these pieces easier to manage and harder to lose. I ended up using felt for the wings and the fins because I knew how challenging it would be to make these details out of cotton and later be confronted with the task of sewing then turning them to conceal the raw, prone to unraveling edges. After removing the heat and bond backing paper from the appliques, I then situated all my pieces using the placement guide on the pattern before ironing so that they would fuse all at the same time. The 
And doing a super dense stitch, like a satin stitch or other applique stitch, it's best to back your project with a fusible or tearaway interfacing to keep your project flat and not puckery. To get a consistently full looking satin stitch, make sure to pivot your presser foot with the needle down outside of the applique. Doing this will avoid weird gaps and voids in your stitching. I was able to get Mothman's eyes looking great with the satin stitch technique, but I didn't have as good of luck with the wing details. Here I am trying to salvage the original wing set only to abandon this idea and revert back to the original felt and straight stitch method. Everybody, I just wanted to run through what we got accomplished yesterday before we get started today. I attempted that satin stitch I was talking about like along these applique edges and like ultimately determined that it wasn't really going to work all that well with the smaller applique pieces just because the stitching was layering up on itself and making it difficult for the sewing machine to progress around the piece. And I played around with the distance between the stitches to make it like not quite so dense but it didn't really seem to do too much. This could definitely work if the pieces were just bigger in size. I ultimately went back to the original way that I did the wings on the first set because it wasn't necessarily a weak point. I thought it would be a nice improvement if I could do the satin stitching so I adhered felt pieces and I went with the felt just because it won't fray like the cotton will since the cotton's woven, the felt is fused together. And then I did a straight stitch around the outside edge of each little applique. We're pretty far on Mothman. I'm just gonna fold over the wings and put this, like right sides together like so, and then stitch around from the edge of this wing to the other side. And this spot right here will serve as my turning opening and where I'll be able to put in the batting and the catnap. And then with Nessie, I need to do a straight stitch around these applique parts, make the fins, and then placing it in between these notches. Doing like a little edge stitch right here to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna be putting in the belly panel in between these notches. Then putting the two halves together and stitching around from here to here and here to here to leave this open to be able to turn it and then I fill it with the polyfill and the catnip.
Thank you so much for going on this experimental journey with me. I really enjoyed revisiting this past project and getting the opportunity to try out new and in some cases better methods of making little versions of Nessie and Mothman in kitty toy form. All in all, not all my original plans panned out the way I was hoping they would, but both Exmoor and Zinnia love their new toys, so for that reason I consider this project a success. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in some sort of status update for Nessie and Mothman as they're played with over time. I'm curious to see if my predictions are correct in the cotton being more durable than the felt, and I figured you might be too. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit my creepy craft corner of the internet. I really do appreciate you taking the time to like, subscribe, and comment below. Liking and commenting lets me know what content is resonating with you most and gives me an idea of what projects to do in the future. Now without further ado, let's get to the grand reveal.